Hello, uh, I'm going a bit to introduce myself. Uh, I'm uh, Artem Filatov, I'm living in Nizhny Novgorod. It's uh, a rather small city in comparison with uh, the capital of uh, Russia, Moscow, for example. It's about uh, two million people, but uh, this city is really close to Moscow. It's about uh, 600 uh, kilometers, and it's very close uh, for any, uh, any uh, person who is living in Moscow and even people who uh, live there can came uh, on week weekends uh, just to watch Nizhny Novgorod, but actually it never happens so. <laughs> uh, our city is, uh, uh, can be called ancient only because uh, in a few years it's going to celebrate its uh, 800 uh, uh, years since it was uh, built and established. And actually this city uh, is, uh, its city center is uh, filled with wooden buildings, with uh, brick buildings that uh, is uh, that are um, that are very old and uh, have a huge value because of uh, its uh, their history. These are the historical buildings that are sometimes empty, sometimes almost uh, uh, crashing down. And uh, there are cases uh, of uh, the life in these uh, old buildings that uh, I'm trying to work with. And uh, to speak about Nizhny Novgorod, uh, I've got uh, some images and some information uh, that could uh, drive you somehow closer to the situation that we've got. This is just a typical images of Nizhny Novgorod when the new structures, the new buildings are built somewhere near the historical uh, buildings and houses. And sometimes uh, they are left and nobody knows what is going to be with them in the future. And sometimes they are abandoned or people who live there trying to safeguard their property, trying to safeguard their uh, they need to have uh, a house somewhere in the city and not be forced to move out from the city center to the outskirts and live in a block of flats without, uh, uh, without not uh, that uh, accommodations that they've got here. Uh, it's not only the case uh, of uh, old houses that uh, could be just apartments, just uh, not uh, being mansions, uh, that uh, are of high architecture, of uh, high historical or architectural value. But actually, there are cases when even uh, the unique houses, unique mansions like Troisky House that you can see uh, on the image are almost falling down because of the owner who is making nothing to safeguard it and to rebuild it and to make something better with it. And actually you see the condition in which this house is now and uh, the wall that you see is right now falling down and uh, it only stays in its place because of uh, wooden uh, logs that uh, make it uh, stay in its uh, place. Actually, uh, this situation is not only about the negative uh, cases. There are people who are trying to reimagine the future of Nizhny Novgorod not only as uh, a city with uh, new <coughs> buildings, with uh, new uh, flats, with uh, malls and trading centers full of shops, cafes, uh, cinema parks, but with uh, its uh, glorious history, its glorious uh, streets that are full of uh, uh, people who understand uh, uh, the who. Um, can uh, witness the memory of its city and its uh, real spirit. And there are some uh, city guardians, I don't know, the people who are trying to, uh, to defend the buildings that uh, are going to be demolished by the developers or by the government. And there are cases when they even uh, crossed the street to stop the vehicles and the um, the vehicles, the special vehicles that are trying to um, to demolish the structures, but uh, there are no cases of success of these uh, activists and these kinds of groups. 
uh, in uh, guarding these buildings. And actually, the first uh, image is about uh, a house that uh, uh, was about to be, to be demolished and only because of the activists it stayed for about five months. But then uh, the police came and uh, supported the developer and the building is now demolished. And uh, the second image, it is uh, a very uh, unique uh, house uh, of the Nizhny Novgorod that was uh, demolished this year in the first working day of uh, 2015 uh, year and actually uh, it was a building where lived uh, its owner who tried to uh, to make it in a proper way uh, she was very old and the, she uh, almost uh, made a small museum in her own uh, building showing the history of her uh, relatives of her family of the building and the close uh, streets but then he, uh, when she died, uh, her um, son and daughter uh, sold uh, this building to the developer, and of course it was demolished. <clears throat> Actually, uh, it's, uh, it is a very unique city because uh, I uh, somehow represent uh, the street artist scene, because I'm, I do street art and uh, I work mainly with street artists. And uh, the unique uh, uh, thing or thing of uh, street artists uh, in Nizhny Novgorod is that they prefer not to make uh, uh, public interventions in new uh, streets and new buildings. They prefer to work on wooden structures, wooden buildings, and to communicate with people. And actually, this one, uh, this work is not legal. Ah, this uh, work is illegal, and uh, it's made by Andrei Lenev. And uh, during that uh, time when he was working from the morning till evening, uh, the people who live in this uh, building was just uh, coming nearby, asking him, uh, speaking, speaking about what he's doing. And uh, they really appreciated uh, that the thing that he's trying to arouse, the, um, to arouse uh, some, trying to make uh, people come to this uh, building and to see its conditions and to see its people who are living there. And actually there are a lot of cases when uh, the street artists in Nizhny Novgorod not only making the work itself, like uh, the pure art actually, but are trying to make a dialogue with people and have a moral legislation for making their works. And for example this is uh, my work uh, and this house was demolished this year. Uh, actually, it is uh, situated near the huge uh, plant site that is now like an abandoned place, just uh, uh, like a desert. And uh, on this uh, building, on this site, is going to be uh, maintained uh, a hotel and a group of uh, block flats uh, with uh, parking and with shops. And uh, uh, the project that I'm going to speak about is mainly dedicated to uh, the uh, cross of street artists and street art discipline and the problem of preserving and safeguarding and re reimagining the future of uh, historical buildings. And it's always, uh, it started just very uh, typically, uh, we uh, thought about making the excursions uh, showing the street art objects. And the first excursion is, was about 20 people, uh, the second one was about 30 people, and the last one was about uh, 90 people. It, it was like a huge crowd uh, moving on the streets. And it was uh, the main key uh, that uh, showed me as an author that street art uh, is arousing a lot of interest in people. They like to understand why it is made, what people, uh, what authors uh, think when they're trying to make uh, works, and they understand the difference between the art that is made in galleries or in museums and the street art that is made not uh, in the willing of getting to some kind of uh, uh, special groups uh, to some kind of uh, value which is cons uh, consists of, for example, money, fame, or something like that. But artists somehow are uh, trying to speak about their problems that they see in the city by some difficult, different methods. 
this uh, this is uh, some uh, of the images of the excursion this, uh, excursions that I made uh, the previous year, and uh, this year we repeated uh, those excursions involving different artists who showed their roads. Uh, the places of the Nizhny Novgorod. And actually, during those uh, excursions, we are not only showing the works and saying who are the authors. We are speaking about the stories that, laid, uh, uh, that are close to, to these works. And uh, we are trying to um, somehow put people into the context why uh, the Office work in this kind of uh, place, why they painted this kind of a picture in this kind of a wall. Uh, this is one of the <laughs> most popular excursion uh, uh, of street art in Nizhny Novgorod. And uh, uh, last year I tried to imagine how we could uh, maintain this, uh, some kind of a success, some kind of activity of uh, Nizhnogra street artists and uh, the problem of uh, the future of historical uh, center. And uh, last year I tried uh, to make a small experiment. Uh, we made a street art festival, which is uh, called New City. And uh, its core was uh, a very unique thing for Russia uh, in, uh, and actually for the world, I guess. Uh, because uh, we were not uh, coming to the government and asking them to provide walls. We were not going to uh, some companies, some structures uh, which are close to the buildings. Uh, we uh, asked people the citizens of Nizhny Novgorod uh, to uh, submit their, uh, to make their submissions about what kind of places they want to be painted by street artists. And actually, it was, uh, it was actually an experiment. I thought that uh, it's very close to failure. And uh, that year we had uh, 90, uh, 90 submissions from all uh, the places uh, of Nizhny Novgorod. And this work was made, uh, we, uh, we had a very small budget and we tried uh, to maintain that uh, kind of uh, um, dialogue between the artist, the organizer and uh, the citizen, the activist, uh, to make works that are needed for the city, that are needed for special people, uh, for those people who are living mainly in this uh, uh, house. And to make street art, uh, the program of street art, not something like uh, semi-street art program, but uh, the real dialogue between street artists and uh, the active citizens that want to make a change in their city. And actually this uh, is um, uh, one of the works that we made uh, the previous year. And uh, a very key work was uh, made by Alexei Luka from Moscow. He made uh, a wooden assemblage on the wall of a very old uh, mansion. And uh, after this work, after getting in touch with those people who said that uh, we always walk uh, the center of the city, we see this street art, and we thought about why uh, they are not going to our street, why they can't just go to my building and make something. That's why I made a submission. And uh, this year we've made uh, uh, street Art Festival, which, is, which was called New City Ancient. And uh, it was about uh, um, calling for submissions uh, to the people who are living in uh, old houses, who uh, have the will of uh, making it somehow better, and to call uh, the street artist to uh, reimagine the history of the house, the stories of the people and to arouse more agenda in the public media, for example, uh, about the problem of preserving the historical sites of Nizhny Novgorod. And actually, uh, we tried uh, to... We understand that some people who are living in those uh, buildings are not uh, using uh, internet, as we do. <laughs> That's why we made posters with just uh, uh, clear statements and uh, we put it uh, on wooden structures and wooden buildings with pins 
to understand whether people are, are getting out uh, of uh, these posters without, uh, without uh, getting uh, the pins. This is how we can understand whether those people are preserving their house and took uh, uh, the poster with them just to call us. Or they took it because they don't like uh, the posters, they don't like their, uh, their home, and they don't know, uh, they don't want any kind of changes to their street, to their house. They re really uh, looking forward to move out of this uh, house and live some, in some kind of uh, block of flats. And uh, we've made seven works with uh, eight uh, um, guest uh, uh, artists. And this one is my favorite, actually, because it is a house which is painted in all its surfaces. And it's a, a house where the descendants uh, of uh, the Decemberists are like right now living. And um, it's a unique place. Uh, not in the architecture, but in the spirit of those people who are living there, because once they uh, somehow saved their house from being demolished by the collective, uh, uh, by the collective work, uh, it was uh, set on fire three times, but they managed somehow to defend it. And uh, they even have a book about their house, just an electronic book. Uh, that's why uh, two artists, Timofey Radia and Stas Dobry, made uh, a work which involved uh, uh, imagining the lace work and the quotations of the Augustine's uh, confession about the memory, about the uh, remembering and forgetting about the history, about yourself and about anything else. And uh, I will uh, shortly show you the other works and uh, speak about maybe uh, the most key points uh, of uh, those things. Um, for example, this is the last uh, work of the festival and uh, the artist uh, uh, somehow tried to reimagine the history of this uh, building and uh, the modern history mostly of this building because uh, the people who were living there uh, try to arouse uh, the government interest uh, of uh, getting uh, out of this building and having an, uh, a better flat. And that's how, this is why uh, they wrote uh, quotations about the government, about uh, the system on this building. And uh, when the artist was about to make its picture, uh, he um, uh, said that he not going to uh, <laughs> paint over those quotations and make its history on its uh, place. Uh, this is uh, one of uh, a very, this is a very difficult uh, moment in our festival. Uh, actually, um, it's a, a pair uh, house of a house where lived a very famous Russian constructor. Uh, who invented uh, very special uh, ships that are flying almost uh, on the surface uh, of the water. His name is Rostislav Alexeev. And uh, mm, the, this uh, house is uh, not preserved by the, by the government. For example, the house where Rostislav Alexeev lived is preserved by the government. And on this place of uh, this building, uh, developer is trying to build uh, a block of flats and uh, the only uh, owner of the flat who is right now living in the only one flat and all other flats are empty is trying to somehow uh, defend their her right to stay on this ground but actually uh, she had no chance to uh, stay against uh, the government uh, and the developer and we try to arouse uh, the awareness of her situation. We made a lot of articles, uh, interviews with her, and uh, the artist made this kind of an imagined world that uh, is really uh, close to the situation uh, uh, of this uh, building, because it is uh, in the uh, surrounding of uh, trees uh, with uh, the plants uh, from uh, the Red Book, 
and uh, it's an installation with uh, real um, tree and with real wood. And right now you can see that uh, there is uh, an empty hal an empty window. I guess uh, it's uh, it's clearly uh, seen. And uh, when we finished the festival, the developer bought the uh, the flat, uh, the upper flat uh, of the building, and uh, demolished the windows to make the building less safer to make uh, the water drip to the only person who is living there. And we somehow uh, managed to, to cover those uh, uh, windows uh, with, um, with wood to prevent uh, snow and uh, water. Uh, this is another work uh, and uh, it is uh, called uh, The Treasure. Uh, a Moscow artist, uh, Stas Dobry, try to imagine uh, the house as a kind of spirit, uh, woman spirit, and make uh, some kind of jewel for her, made of a conditioner, made of a cell, and made of a, some kind of imagined jewelry. And uh, this building is very interesting because uh, the mostly, mostly when we are speaking with uh, people who are active and uh, ask us to who wanted to participate in this uh, build, uh, in this project? Uh, though they are pensioners, they are uh, very old people, and uh, this time it was uh, very young uh, architectures who uh, refurbished their home, who made it like a loft and something like that. And it is uh, really interesting because when you speak, make an interview, and uh, prepare the material for the painter to understand. To, um, what to paint on this house, uh, we see uh, the different motives of people why they want to stay in this building and preserve them uh, rather than moving to a block of flats. And uh, this is uh, a work by uh, Igor Klon from Israel. He is the only uh, foreign participant in this project and actually he is a very famous street artist. And um, he made this work uh, on a building which is actually the first, um, the first uh, brick building in this uh, uh, district of the city. Once uh, before the Soviet Union it was uh, only a uh, village. And after the Soviet Union there was planted uh, different plants, uh, factories and so on, and it is, was the first building that is, was made of concrete and of bricks. And uh, uh, it is not about the historical center, but we thought about that um, making uh, the festival less centralized is uh, just better. And the person who is living there is um, uh, very happy that we tried to make those uh, gray surfaces uh, somehow imagined as a real, I don't know, a crowd. Uh, and uh, as, they, as she said, that after we made this work, the, um, the company that is uh, uh, working on this, in this, uh, <laughs> the company that, uh, um, that is working with this uh, house, with this, with this building, uh, made some uh, made some development uh, of this building, made some rearrangements to make it better to live. So I guess, as she said, we somehow um, made the agenda for them to return to this building and to remember that it's still alive. Uh, this is uh, another case. Uh, it's, it was uh, a warehouse where the sex uh, with uh, different crops uh, was hold, were held and uh, after the Soviet Union came uh, it became a place to live so actually people were living in a warehouse and uh, uh, it stays uh, in some kind of a district where, which is very close to the center of the city but nobody is walking there uh, it's just a place which is uh, which, uh, of which people are forgot about. And uh, this work uh, is about safeguarding those uh, uh, 
buildings. And uh, Nizhny Novgorod artist Nikita Nomers made this at Antland, which uh, is a very clear image of uh, the strength and the architecture, which is so uh, liked in Nizhny Novgorod and, for example, in St. Petersburg. Uh, and this is a very uh, a special uh, project. Uh, this is a one-stored house in the center of the city. Uh, the owner of this house uh, uh, had no idea about what is going on uh, to be in the future with his house, but he really liked the idea to uh, somehow reimagine its uh, past and its future. And uh, he told us in the interview that uh, his uh, relatives in the past had uh, a stable with horses uh, at the, near the house and the artist from Serpukhov, it's a small city near Moscow, made this installation, which was uh, painted on wood. And uh, we held a parallel program uh, which, uh, with which we tried to arouse interest in not only street art, but uh, in uh, uh, the historical uh, buildings uh, uh, itself. We held uh, a few excursions, you can see the images. Uh, we've made uh, an exhibition of uh, the foreign uh, artists in a, the only Nizhny Novgorod gallery, which is named Tolk. Tolk. Uh, and uh, right now we are finishing uh, the work with making a film about uh, the festival. And actually it is not going to be a time lapse with the artist painting a wall. It is not going to be a drum and bass uh, music. Uh, it is uh, a, a film, uh, I guess about uh, 20 or 30 minutes, about the people who are living in those uh, buildings. Because um, during the festival we had a lot of information which is possible to translate to people who are very interested in the festival and its uh, uh, stories. So I guess this film could uh, somehow open the door to the private spaces of those people who um, open those places for artists and for us. Mm, there is some statistics actually about the, uh, the project. Okay. Uh, mm, about the results of this uh, project, it is very difficult uh, to uh, it is very difficult to speak about the results of this project because actually we are making actually art uh, and not uh, helping the people to solve their problems. And it is, it is not impossible to make uh, art as some kind of food which uh, people can use it and make the living of it. But uh, the um, public uh, of uh, the city, the city uh, the people who live in Nizhny Novgorod uh, participated in this project and witnessed uh, the whole story. And uh, we translated the stories, the unique stories of all people who are living in these uh, um, houses to the mass public. And the key idea was to uh, say that um, the only chance to preserve and to guard the future of historical buildings in Nizhny Novgorod is to start by your own, to start from your own uh, houses and from your own uh, attitude towards them. Because those people who uh, submitted, uh, who made the submission to the festival are active and by their own examples they're showing that the city center and the city historical buildings can be uh, can stay in the future of uh, Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, and uh, by making art, we are trying to somehow uh, make a sign of, uh, uh, of, uh, that can avoid touching those uh, houses, that can, make, that can put those houses on the city's map. But who knows, uh, uh, one of uh, our mm, key uh, jokes is that there are uh, works of Banksy that uh, are being demolished from the walls and uh, are held in uh, glass. Uh, <laughs> but maybe somehow, some, some time ago, maybe in a few years, those buildings will be too preserved because of these works and because of the stories that were held during this festival. And right now we are thinking about the future project, the, uh, the next uh, 
uh, year about how to translate this uh, very um, special um, project into something more bigger in the city and make it like uh, some kind of an image of the city. And I guess, uh, I hope uh, it's going to be held uh, the next year. Thank you.